So here is the replicated Wall Street Bets Reddit from the screenshot we gave it, which was simply this. So I gave it a screenshot of this and it went ahead and generated this. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the GLM 4.6 V family of models, which were released a couple of days ago. Now, obviously, if you're familiar with the GLM family of models, they're very highly regarded for their aesthetic encoding prowess. Even back in the day, which is probably like eight or so months ago, maybe less, when GLM 432B came out, that model, even at a Q4 quant, was incredible at doing front-end design and something that fit in a 24 gigabyte cart. For today, they do have a new model family out right here, GLM 4.6V, and part of the reason I'm very excited right now is because my first test of this did something that I was extremely impressed with, and I do want to prominently just actually jump into showing you what I did with this model that really impressed me. So right now, obviously this is my YouTube channel page, I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of that just like this. And we're going to paste it right here into the model where we are currently chatting with GLM 4.6V. There are two model sizes here. This is the larger of the two at 106 billion parameters. And I'm going to tell this to replicate this UI or this screenshot in a file that can be opened in a browser. So that's all we're going to send this right now. While it is thinking through, this is a model that has thinking capabilities. We're just gonna take a quick peek at the announcement blog post. So something very interesting I think to make note of currently is that in addition to the 106 billion parameter variant that was released right here, there is also the GLM 4.6 V flash, which is a 9 billion parameter model. I did intend to kind of showcase this running locally. However, sadly, most of the quants that I've seen on Hugging Face for it right now are not working with vision input, which would really detract from showcasing the ability of this to basically almost like multimodal coding agent. Uh, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but we can go back here and, okay, so it it is currently just coding it right now and it does have its own little artifact window that we see. So what I wanted to showcase here, oh, I mean, <laughs> okay, the, so the images are not the best, but regardless of that, take a look at this. It really did do a fantastic job of actually just kind of ripping what we sent it. Bijan Moen, 36.5k subscribers, everything here is correct. Let's um, go in here. Okay, so it chooses images randomly, which is why we see a bunch of random images right here. But regardless of that, look at all of the UI elements that it actually carried over. And truthfully, this is my second time trying this test because the, the first time I tried this was on my computer over there, which is why I looked over there. And it did a really, really impressive job. So I wanted to showcase this and I was immediately excited. The capability here is really cool. And beyond this, just having the ability to give it a photo of something that you want to have made and then having the ability to then create it is very, very cool. So I'm excited to test this model. Now to briefly talk a little more about this family of models before we just jump into the testing, there are two sizes, a 106 billion parameter one, which is just GLM 4.6V, and then GLM 4.6V Flash is a 9 billion parameter model. As I had said, the quantizations that I found on Hugging Face for this right now don't currently have working multimodal or image in support, so that kind of detracts from my ability to test this currently, but when that does get sorted out, it will be something very, very cool for folks who want to run this locally and have some form of ability to give it an image and have it code what we see in the image. So keep an eye on that one. Regardless, they have a context window of 128K. There's a lot of talk here about like native function calling capabilities. They talk about native multimodal tool use. I don't want to really regurgitate what's on the screen right here that anyone can go and in their own time kind of just read and find out. So I will gloss over some of these things, but I find something that really stuck out to me and something that someone had mentioned, I believe in a comment or on Discord, which made me like, hold on a second, I need to check this out, is right down here, pixel level replication. So number three, front end replication and visual interaction. They have optimized it for front end dev, which their models are always seemingly very, very good at, significantly shortening the design to code cycle. By uploading a screenshot or design file, the model identifies layouts, components, color schemes, and generates high fidelity code. And this part is really cool, the interactive editing, where you can circle an area on the screen and then give it natural language instructions, like basically, okay, move this button over to the left, and it will go ahead and understand that and do it. So this really is almost like multimodal coding uh, model, I guess, or something of the sort. I don't know that there is a specific piece of terminology for that, but they have long context understanding, and it is cool that they say this is equivalent to around 150 pages of complex documents, 200 slide pages, or a one hour long video in a single inference pass. 
Now, of course, we're going to do the browser operating system, but I figure we'll do it in a way that kind of tests some of the capabilities of this model. So I'm asking it to go ahead and search for some image inspiration relating to hacker and cyber aesthetic, but then I threw in also with a splash of cottage core. Uh, that's like something I saw once it was a subreddit and some of the images were kind of interesting So I've then told it to use the styles you find in these images to go ahead and create a desktop operating system Using HTML, JS, and CSS the results should just fit in a single script and be able to be run in a modern browser So we can see right here that it is going ahead and highlighting or executing its image search capability Which it will then use for inspiration for this design now <laughs> Okay I don't know that cottage core and like cyber aesthetic or something that is generally mixed together But I am interested to see uh, the result of doing so. All right, and we're about to see the result as it did finish generating the script <sighs> That's pretty good So it immediately opens up with a terminal window right here that is highlighted I see some hacker glitch aesthetic numbers scrolling down in the background interesting the start Bar says cyber cottage. We do have okay type help for available commands. I don't know that I see anywhere here to actually Okay, the proper thing to do is download this code and then open it in Chrome, which I will do All right, let's check out our hacker cottage core operating system from within Chrome let's Close out of that. Okay. I still don't see unfortunately a way to go ahead and type in here But that's all right keeping in mind that you know this did a pretty good job. Let's minimize this Okay, we can't we can close it. All right, we've got some, I love the, the background aesthetic. Look at the way the numbers are dropping. And again, hopefully it's easier for you to see without a crappy laptop screen in front of you and very bright studio lights. Let's click Cyber Cottage. Okay, well, something did happen when I clicked this button. Unfortunately, nothing <laughs> interesting. All right. None of those are functional. Okay, let's do our browser. Cyber Cottage Network, Digital Garden, Hackers, Hearth, Hearth, Code Blossoms, Binary Berries. The UI here is really quite cool. Let's open our notes app. Okay, we can type in here and it is doing a lime green aesthetic. Neon Blossom, Cyber Cottage Orchestra. Okay, so it really adhered to the stylistic elements here, even when kind of assuming the fake file names and fake websites and things of that sort. Can we open these? Okay, but that's all right. Chat. Botanical hacker. Oh, have you seen the new neon roses? And then finally we have the gallery. Ah, quite beautiful. This was a cool result. And keep in mind, this model's not really very big um, in terms of like its competition. Let's go ahead and just give it a finely hand-drawn wireframe, in my humble opinion, of the Stevie Slappis portfolio website and just tell it to turn that into a website. I can't directly create a website from the wireframe, but I can provide you with a comprehensive guide to transform. I'm just telling it to make the website look like the wireframe in that case. Okay, this was fairly short and right around 200 lines of code. Okay, welcome to my portfolio, TV Lapis. So it, I don't believe caught that the big S was supposed to be before both names there, but that's okay. All right, we have some skills front end of the hover effects here are not bad. We have an about me section. There are some modern tech aesthetic colors, I suppose, right here. Very interesting photo of this old Land Rover. Passionate developer with five years of experience. Problem solver, creative thinker, and team player. Nice. And get in touch. This is actually a nice contact card. I'm impressed with the specific contact card right here. LinkedIn, GitHub, Twitter, and basketball. Now, of course, something I want to try that they highlighted in the release post is that basically you can take a screenshot of something and then draw a circle around it or reference it somehow like that and then tell the model to specifically do something with that image. So I want to go ahead and tell it to make an edit based off of something I draw on the screen here. Don't mind the lackluster way that I had to go about kind of drawing a circle around the item that I want changed. So I've told it to take the highlighted element in the green circle, move it to the right of the page, make it three times as large, and then give it some subtle movement effect. Okay, not entirely what I had denoted, but it did go ahead and then just actually add the green circle, place an image inside it, and then give it some form of rotation. So... <laughs> Uh, again, I didn't necessarily have the best method of actually drawing said green circle. So overall, I'm not going to call this a bad result. It definitely highlights an interesting capability of this model.
Something I want to try right here is actually generating a mock-up of a UI using Nano Banana Pro, and then we'll take the image that gets generated here for the UI mock-up, give it to GLM 4.6v, and ask it to actually create it. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're just going to select what's contained within this retro CRT. We'll just ignore any, like, judgment of this. I mean, this is pretty cool pixel art, of course, but all I want is a UI mock-up that GLM then has to subsequently go ahead and recreate from an image. I don't know that my prompt is the best phrasing, but I believe it's good enough that they shouldn't understand it. Just saying, using this reference image, create a UI and a website identical to what's shown. And we see right here, it's properly going ahead and filling in or picking out the individual items that will be contained on the page. Create the pixel art style, replicate the layout exactly, create the charts. I can use simple CSS or a lightweight chart library and match the colors and fonts. This appears to be some kind of cloud computing or GPU cloud service with a retro pixel art aesthetic. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need a second on this one. Okay, so here's the reference image just so we can kind of become more familiar with it. We have a bar chart, GPU load, some cloud icons, pixel cloud with a cloud icon, and then a buy credits button. Let's now go back and see. Okay, the credit usage, the GPU load, it's actually, it did pixel art style text here as well, as well as the buy credits button. We have a little cloud attempt there with a lightning bolt coming out of it, as well as more pixel art effect. The background is grid-like and the color palette is relatively similar. I'll say, again, just as more of a demonstration of some of the capabilities here, this really is quite cool because we did just go ahead and generate an AI image mock-up of a UI, give it back to a model, and then have the model actually create it in some form of code. So, that is kind of cool. All right, I'm going to take a screenshot of the Wall Street Bet subreddit and then give it to this model and just say replicate this page pixel for pixel or something like that. I'll use the terminology that they had mentioned here in the blog post. So will Steve Fickham replicate the Wall Street Bet subreddit from a screenshot? Damn. Okay. That is really good. Let's open this on, let's actually, we'll open this in the browser so we can look at them side by side. So here is the replicated Wall Street Bets Reddit from the screenshot we gave it, which was simply this. So I gave it a screenshot of this and it went ahead and generated this. That is quite good. <laughs> it must have definitely been familiar with this layout. I mean, it is a pretty simple, like kind of text-based layout and it does put placeholders in so users can put image assets themselves. The, we do have hover effects on the upvotes and downvotes, which is interesting to see. We have the way to sort it we have home, popular, all users, all of the things that were listed up here, as well as the username that is logged in on this Reddit account. So this is this is very, very, very well done. I would definitely say that the prompting style that I used right here, where I basically just ripped the phrasing they took from the blog post, I would say this is the way to go. Now I'm gonna try that again, but with something that's like not at all a screenshot of anything on a computer. It's just the <laughs> photo of myself with the Honda Beat, but I'm gonna give it the same prompt saying, using this image, identify the layouts, components, etc., and then replicate it. Ah, okay. Unfortunately, GLM 4.6v is getting rate limited right now, and I did go ahead and just try to make sure it wasn't a specific issue with the web chat, and it's not. It didn't work on Open Router as well using ZAI as a provider, so I have just swapped to a different provider on Open Router right here. It is the same model, and based on the testing that we did previously, it does seem like this is pretty similar to what we would have seen had we done this successfully through the chat interface right here. So regardless of that, let's just go ahead now. And the only difference is we'll just have to actually save these files and then open them in the browser as opposed to seeing them in the artifact window, which is no big deal. All right, let's see what it decided to do with... <laughs> okay, so it basically just went ahead and I will say, when I was watching it generate code, it was really doing each individual shelf, each toy car on each shelf. Okay, so this is more of like a... <laughs> not necessarily what I had in mind. So overall, these are really impressive. They have a bunch of unique and cool capabilities. And again, the 9 billion parameter flash variant is something that is going to be very cool to use. Unfortunately, just the current state of the GGUFs or the quants on Hugging Face don't have vision support. So I kind of wanted to just keep this with one that we could highlight the vision capabilities, which is the larger of the two. 
Overall, I think the most impressive thing here was the replication of the Wall Street bet screenshot, which we see right here. That is an exceptionally well done result. And I think also this, uh, again, I don't know anyone who would mix the concept of a cottage core and hacker cyber aesthetics, but this did a really nice job at that, <laughs> especially with the falling binary digits and things of that sort. This is just really neat. An open source model like this that is rather potent with visual understanding and replication of visual or images is very impressive and something cool to highlight. GLM always has cool models and they've been highly regarded for front end design capabilities since GLM 432B or perhaps even before that. So I was very excited to test this. That's going to wrap up today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.